Welcome to Season 3. On this episode, we talk about what's coming for the new selling year, including our wheat varieties and the new product guide. Cooler temperatures are ahead, and we pay tribute to a longtime friend and customer of Mershman Seeds. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Cup of Joe, Season 3, Episode 1. So here we go. Uh, it's a new year. It, uh, as far as seed selling goes. Uh, mm-hmm. August 1st uh, is the uh, first day of the new sales season, uh, so we get to do it all over again. Well, we still got a little bit to do this year yet, Ben, right? So tell us how the crop's doing and what's going on here. I kind of wanted to touch on a couple different things on the diseases that we're seeing in soybeans and corn. We are seeing septoria brown spot. We see it every year. It's in the bottom part of the canopy. It's when the, the leaves get little brown speckles on them and they eventually turn yellow and they fall off. Isn't that a splash up type? That's how the infection occurs from Correct. when you get a lot of rain, it splashes up on the plant and transfers that infection. Yep. And we typically have seen this, you know, for a month now. Um, some guys are really particular about it because they say there's three bushel on them bottom set of nodes. Other guys think that, you know, the, the shading from the sun is going to eventually drop those leaves anyway. So it's kind of a, a non-issue point there. But we are, this week I did confirm frog eye in a handful of fields. So frog eye is coming in. Um, one of the ways that you can tell when you have frog eye out in that field, you take that leaf off, you put it up against the sun, and there's actually a halo around the outside yep. of a perfectly circle um, a perfectly circle uh, lesion. Black dot, right, in the middle? Uh, some of them can have black dots mm-hmm. in the middle, but it's it's definitely the the brown ring around the outside in a perfect circle. That that's what definitely identifies you your. Like. Yeah, and it's a <laughs> southern disease normally, but and but when we get it up here, it typically means that we've had a lot of rain. So. Right, and you know with that rain, we've been get we've been for the past week now. I think we've had 100 uh, percent humidity every morning we have so much water coming off our dews and stuff. That's I mean it's 11 o'clock in the morning before. Um, anything dries off so and one thing with frog eye now there are certain varieties that we have that have resistance to it uh, but if it gets bad enough it it it'll just melt the leaves off doesn't it right i've seen it bad enough where it's in the top of the canopy by r4 r5 and it's a definite five to ten bushel yield hit because you know it just it just once you get a little bit more heat with it it just spreads so um, that's definitely something to watch for like our Kennedys and our Eisenhowers have excellent field tolerance to it But it's that's not something where I would like you definitely want to get out and scout is what I'm getting at because when do you want to pull the trigger in? Uh, when you see it So when you see it so planes are spraying uh, um, Corn right now, and it'll be about perfect timing for them to go right on to the beans and one right yeah, and we are seeing gray leaf spot. We see gray leaf spot every year. It starts at the bottom of the plant. It's another splash up disease. It will do the same thing where um, it'll continue to climb up that plant as long as we have moisture. And I guess that's another thing about the frog eye. It's it's what what's the future going to what's the future forecast going to have? Are you going to continue to get rains? Are you going to continue to get moisture? In my mind, I think we are just with the patterns that we've had. So I'm pretty proactive when it comes to. Uh, pulling the trigger on fungicides because it's a lot easier to manage more bushels than it is to hit the right point marketing, in my opinion. So R3, right? Is that the time to spray R3 fungicide on soybeans? We, yep. And we are at that point mm-hmm. in many, many cases. Yeah. So well, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of fungicide going on. Yeah. So you guys did indicate that we are starting our selling season here at the beginning of next week. And the first thing that we're going to be selling is our wheat varieties. And we have five varieties, um, two that are from carryover and two that are brand new, and I guess three from carryover, two that are brand new. And I kind of wanted to highlight our new varieties. We have a Barbie 14, that is our mid-early. Then we have a KD 15, which is our ultra-early. The Barbie 14 and everything did really well in our trials this year, but the Barbie 14 has a little bit better disease package than the Julie 10 did, and it showed it by three or four bushel in um, our Mm multi-location, multi-randomized data that we do testing with every year. Um, Really, really solid mid-early variety. The Katie and the Millie are almost, they are so close together. They are like sister lines of each other. They're ultra earlies. They're they're extremely high yielding early varieties that are built for double crop. So really exciting things coming in with the wheat. Wheat is going to be a big push this year. We have more to sell than we did last year. I'm really excited about our new lineup. Millie 7 did really well in Wisconsin. 
I got a phone call from that farmer, I believe. It was, what, 97? 97 was average, so he was very in excited Wisconsin. About it. In Wisconsin. Plus, it came off, what, a little bit earlier than... About two weeks earlier. And he got his double crop in. And he got his double crop in. In Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. That's awesome. So. Wow. Well, that's what we try to do. We try to get these <clears throat> ultra earlies, which will give the opportunity for double crop. And where you can make the uh, the marginal ground, you know, produce as much as the best best ground on your farm as far as revenue mm -hmm. and that's the name of the game for farmers yep so that's kind of what i had you know to get this year started off and i think we got a a, a decent looking crop um that i think we're, we have potential for bumper crop in some spots get a couple more rains we're gonna have a really big crop that is correct turk what do you got for us today i was just going to talk a little bit about uh, again the the Cool weather coming in next week uh, will be good for the crop. Uh, highs in the 70s and lows in the 50s here and across the Midwest. Uh, this hurricane coming up the East Coast seems like it's going to stall our weather pattern a little bit and prolong things a little bit for us. So that'll be good for the for the crop that's pollinated and, and to finish pollinating. And so pr almost ideal conditions, again, as we talked about, um, stuff is looking pretty good we got the dry spot over there in uh, southwest Iowa that continues to be dry and uh, so that's a concern for those folks in that area but I, I don't think the market's really paying attention to it because they think they're putting more bushels on everywhere else in the time being so the markets are are actually holding fairly well for the news in the in the markets so the, the only other thing I got Joe is the um, you know I had a, a guy tell me that the swallows are and the barn swallows in the are grouping on the lines now and and he he told me that that takes uh, that'll happen for about two weeks and then they're gone and the day they leave it's six weeks to the first frost i want to hear that turk <laughs> <laughs> so he he estimated there's going to frost here in southeast iowa the last week of uh, September. Well, that's okay. It's, it's, it, it, I think I think our crop's far enough along that that won't be a, a big hurt on us, but there'll be some corn that may get uh, uh, dinged a little bit, but we'll be in pretty good shape. And then, and then the other signs of nature, the cicadas have been hollering. I'm sure you've heard them the last uh, week or so, or maybe a little bit longer. And again, that's kind of the, kind of the same thing as when you start hearing them, you'll, it's about eight weeks to frost. So Turk, on Monday, because you predicted early frosts would be limited up, right? I, I, I doubt that. <laughs> I well, doubt that. Maybe, uh, maybe if they watch it in yeah. uh, Chicago, it might help a little bit, huh? Again, it, it is a concern, and but I, I think the, the good weather is outweighing. I mean, I don't know what the the, the crop suit or the crop uh, index is right now, but it's it's probably about as high as it's been in the last. 10 years yeah it, so. it, it never fails for a farmer you can have everything going perfect and it's either a hailstorm or an early frost or there's always something you got to worry about it's it's never ending that's for sure yeah you got to keep your head on a swivel yep well tommy you're getting ready to get the sales team uh, fired up and go out and start talking to farmers uh, about these two new traits in list e3 and liberty link gt27 and looks like there's going to be some interest in purchasing those two traits early this year absolutely Joe um, yeah the seed guides will be on the uh, website uh, so uh, if anybody has any questions or concerns they can look at get instant gratification and see that data right there um, wheat sales is going to be a big push too uh, Ben's kind of talked about that we've talked about the successes that's been taking place across the Midwest with with those wheat with our wheat variety so pretty excited about that um, and then pricing I mean, uh, pricing, we've got that settled, and uh, we'll have it set by Monday. So uh, the dealers probably need to get a meeting set up with their ASM to get their annual reviews done. And uh, you're, you're right, Joe. Uh, there's a lot of excitement between those two, two traits, LLGG27 and, and, and List E3. And uh, the biggest question I think we've been, I've been asked in the last week, traveling across uh, Illinois and uh, Iowa and uh, Wisconsin, sorry, uh, is, is there going to be enough supply? And I keep telling everyone, you know, we're going to have plenty of supply. We plan for this. We've we've doubled everything we've can't we've could. Uh, we're ready to go. Our salesmen are ready to go. Our dealers are ready to go. And I think it's a lot of excitement to get into place where um, things are going to be really taken off for us this year, Joe. Yeah, the farmer who plans early typically makes more money than 
reacting you know, at the last minute. And in both of our plants, uh, Olmstead and at West Point, we're putting more capacity into them right now. Uh, it was planned expansion, so uh, we're putting some additional capacity uh, for if that demand develops, and uh, we expect it to develop. So, uh, and and just remember, Tommy, as you talk to your customers, you know, tell them a deal's a deal with Merchant Seeds. You order seed from us, you're going to get it. You don't have to worry about selling substitute, which is kind of the, the way the BS companies, the big seed companies, tend to do. And uh, there's no need to order from two seed companies yeah. hoping to get half. And that's a, that's exactly right, Joe, because a lot of questions were uh, when you I follow that up with, you know, do you have enough supply? And I said, absolutely, yes, we do. And if you order, when you order for Merchant Seeds, you're going to get what you ordered. Yep. We're not going to back out on a deal like a lot of these other companies are doing because there is a lot of other companies that are out there saying, we have plenty of enlist beans, and we know that's not be true. So um, just make sure you get what you order. Uh, with Mershman Seeds, that's not a question. It's a, it's a fact. That's what you're going to get. So there's no worries in that situation. But if you do do business with anybody else and you're hoping to get that, you, uh, hopefully you get it down in writing that that's what you ordered, and that's what you're going to get. So Yeah, as long as Turk's prediction about an early frost doesn't come true, we should have good supply. Absolutely. So, so that's why, again, hey, why not? Take advantage of the situation. You know, I always tell farmers there's only one reason to wait to buy your soybean seed. That's because you want to pay more. Absolutely. Because right now we have the best best prices and the lowest prices of the year starting out of the gate. And we know the varieties. We know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. we got we got a track record on them. So there's, uh, we, we can save you some money. And at the end of the day, that's what farmers want, like to do. They like to keep their costs down. And you're going to like the way we do business. Yep. So, well... I would like to conclude this Cup of Joe episode uh, with something uh, personal to me. Uh, we lost a local farmer, uh, Larry Blint, uh, to COVID, and it's kind of a sad deal. Um, he, he's been a customer for us, in fact, his entire family, actually four generations now. And uh, Craig, his son now, has taken over the farming operation. but. Uh, Larry um, has been one of those go-to guys that we had in our company for years. Yeah. Um, if When Roundup Ready Soybeans came out, we said, hey, we need somebody to plant 25 pounds per acre because the seed cost out of South America was costing us $125 a bag. Larry said, sure, I'll do it, and produced a great crop. You know, when we had Liberty Link Soybeans came along, we needed somebody to grow. He grew. I mean, he, he's been a grower longer than I can remember. I've been here 43 years, and I know he's grown longer than I can remember. So I, I don't know how long his family's been growing. But his his grandfather started with us back in 1954. His dad bought from us. He, he has bought from us. And Craig. So it's four generations of a family that's bought from us. And what I liked about Larry is every time he discovers something really positive, he would come in. He'd always come in the back door. You know, he didn't have to have a formal go through the front door. He came in the back door, come in my office, sit down, and he'd say, "Hey, did you see this, Joe? Did you see that?" And it was always we always had a good conversation. So we're we're definitely going to miss him. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to conclude this episode with a commercial that he did in 2004. He was definitely an advocate for Merchant Seeds, and we appreciate it. Take care. Well, I use Merchant Bone Scoated Beans because we're planting earlier, we're planting wetter soils. We need something to help with adverse conditions that affect uh, germination. Those Scoated Beans seem to be doing it. So I've had always good luck with their seed. Well, I think it goes in hand in hand. If they got a good product and good service, that's kind of who you want to deal with. Merchman Seed is truly my friend in the field.